Okay, hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about why it is okay and actually ideal in a lot of times and places for us to not pursue what we are told by culture and society we need to pursue in order to be good, healthy, successful, who we should be and what we should be individuals. Because I feel like a lot of talk in the person, like in the self-help, personal goals, spirituality world, we focus a lot on telling people to pursue their dreams and to pursue what they value and to go after the things that matter to them and to do this and do that and do this and do that. And again, that's great. Um, finding your passion, finding what you think your purpose is, finding finding things that you love doing, filling your life with the things that matter to you as best as you can in our world with all of the restrictions we have on our time and our money and our ways of being is excellent. And we do want to do that. And and again, I'm, I'm all for learning about the things that you care about, learning about the things that matter to you, learning about what you value, and making your life centered around those things. And that's, that's really great. But there's the other side of the coin that I feel like we do not talk about enough, which is this other side of the coin, which is learning how to say no to things, learning how to not pursue what culture tells us to pursue. Learning how to see the dead ends of what we are told is right and what we are told is valuable and what we are told is important. And having the bravery to actually say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to build my life around that. I am not going to pursue that as something that I'm going to put in my life is equally if not harder than pursuing the things that we want to pursue. I really think that learning how to say no and learning how to to be literally counterculture in the sense that we leave voids in our life and actually don't do the things that everyone tells us to do it is one of the hardest things we will ever learn to do in this life and it is one of the most important things that we are ever going to do if we want to create a new society that's going to work better for all of us okay so again this is something that we talk a lot about in the mystery school especially in the newest curriculum that i'm putting out right now is learning how to see the values of society and the values of culture and the things that we are told that we have to do and that we have to be in order to be good enough um, for what they are. Because a lot of the time, what we are being told we need to pursue, what we are being told we need to become, what we are being told we need to invest in is exactly the stuff that's gonna lead to our anxiety, that's gonna lead to our depression, that leads us to feeling not good enough and overwhelmed and like life can never be okay. And it's the stuff that leads us to participating in a system that is not designed for our benefit, that is absolutely designed for corporate profit, for the rich to continue to get richer. It's designed for maximum productivity of corporations, maximum consumption of people. It's designed for exploitation of workers. It's designed to disconnect us from our humanity. And we are being sold and told that these are the things that are gonna make us happy, that are gonna fulfill us, that are gonna make us feel like life is worth living and it's going to fill all these voids that we all feel living in our culture and the more we try to pursue them the more we try to pursue what we're told to pursue the deeper we get into the system the deeper we get into feeling like shit the more we feel like we need to blame ourselves the more we feel like it's because we're not doing enough and we're not taking on enough and we're not doing the buying into cultural values enough and the loop just goes 
round and round and round. Okay, so learning how to disconnect. Learning how to actually step outside of the values and the things that we are told we must do and pursue in our culture in order to be happy, healthy, and to feel successful and to be safe is, again, going to be very triggering for our nervous systems that tell us that fitting in is the way to be safe. It's going to be very triggering for our nervous systems that tell us that to do things that get us rejected, to do things that get us misunderstood, to not go with the crowd is the worst thing we can possibly do. So this is what we're going to break down today. And I'm going to give specific examples because I know that was all very like you know, vague. Um, because yeah, I just feel like there is so much that we need to look at in terms of creating a world where we can feel good as humans. And a lot of it has to do with just not doing stuff. And, and as hard as that is to wrap our minds around, as people who have been trained that the only way to be, you know, proactive, the only way to be good, the only way to be successful is to be constantly doing something, constantly engaging in something, constantly consuming or producing on some level. That to wrap our minds around the idea that part of the answer that we are looking for in terms of our own personal feeling better in life and being a part of the solution that's going to create a better world for the future is not doing stuff. Just literally not doing it. Just actually creating voids and vacuums in our lives where we just don't do the stuff and we don't replace it with something else. And that is like I said, it, it's completely like outside the box of how we're trained to solve problems. It's completely outside the box of how we're trained to build a life and it's completely outside the box of how we're trained to find happiness. And that's why I really wanted to talk about it today and why I have talked about it so much in the mystery school because it it is something that is so counter to how we've been trained to think. And so that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so first things first, again, we need to remember that we are living in a culture, yes, that tells us that the two appropriate ways to be, the two things you're allowed to be doing at any given time where you're going to be celebrated and people are going to say you're doing good is if you're in a state of production and you're doing something and you're accomplishing something so you're you're achieving in your career you're working on your fitness goals you're working on your relationship goals you're journaling you're doing whatever you're doing you're in that state of productivity even it can like literally even our culture has made it so that like things like meditation or self-care it's like a checklist thing that we're checking off to say that we did it and that we're good for doing it yeah instead of actually understanding why we're doing it, which is to benefit, to have some sort of benefit. So we're allowed to be in a state of productivity. We're allowed to be in a state of improving ourselves, improving our lives, working hard, hustling, whatever. And the other state we're allowed to be in, in order for culture to approve of us, is to be in a state of consumption. Because we have to remember that so much of how we are all trained to find our identity and how we're trained to find our groups of people that we fit in with and our, our sense of community and our sense of safety is all tied into what we are able to consume. The goods we are able to consume, the services we're able to consume. Um, I was reading from why don't you say something the other day and she was talking about how there's kind of like two versions of the girl boss the hustle girl boss who's all about like working hard and doing stuff and and going for your dreams and and working a million hours a day so that you can have a million dollars and all this stuff and then there's the the abundance lady boss who's all about um, just attracting and manifesting and, and everything in my life is just this smooth flow and everything is just coming to me. And again, what we're seeing is productivity, 
So this person finding their their value and their worth and their marketing in in I am attracting abundance and I have all this money and I have success and I'm happy because I'm working really hard. I'm hustling all the time. I'm productive. Look at how good I am and look at how much I deserve this wealth because I'm productive. And then the other lady boss who's manifesting and in her feminine and relaxing and letting the universe bring it all to her and she's in her flow is saying like look at all of these things that I can consume because usually the way that they market that is their bubble baths and their spa days and their vacations and their fancy clothes and all their stuff of like look at how valuable I am because I, I own these things. And I have these things, and these are the things that bring me my identity as a good person, as a worthwhile person, because I have all this stuff, yeah? And so we live in this culture where, again, we are allowed to be productive or consumptive, and that's how we are literally judged as whether we are worthwhile, worthy human beings. And we forget and or don't see ever and it's very covered up and not talked about that so much of the time the things that we are able to consume and the ways we are able to be productive aren't just personal choices that we're making. Yeah, like it's very much positioned as though these things are just choices. If you just decide to work hard, you can have whatever kind of life you want. If you are consuming the right things and you look like you have the right things, you're a successful person and everyone will love you and you can like fake your way to success. Like literally these stories of these scammer people who pretend to be rich long enough that eventually they become rich. That like this is how like this is how our world works. We judge people based on their levels of production, their levels of consumption. And also we judge people based on, you know, where they are productive. So we definitely value someone who says they're a lawyer. We automatically assume that person is like a better worthwhile person than if someone says they are a janitor. Even though the level of actual productivity in two, both of these jobs is probably similar. Like how much effort you're gonna put in to do the work that you have to do is very much gonna be very, very similar. But again, we have these hierarchies in our culture about what kind of productivity makes you a worthwhile person and what kind of consumption makes you a worthwhile person. And because again, right, it's, it's all tied into productivity and consumption being the one way we're allowed, the two things we're allowed to be doing, and the two ways that we hierarch our society, and the way that we judge people, and the way that we say that it's okay to judge people. And then again, right, like this then leads into us being indoctrinated into thinking it's okay that certain people literally don't make a living wage or their work is exploited because they're criminals or whatever it is because we say, well, this is the way that you produce. Your production is less valuable than everyone else because of how we've been conditioned to see it. And therefore, it's okay that you don't have enough. It's okay that you are treated unfairly. It is okay that you have poverty in wealthy countries that we could absolutely afford to have everyone make a living wage. It's okay that people who work a full-time job and their corporate overlords, right, are earning millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars a year while their employees are on food stamps and can't make ends meet. And we make that okay because we're saying the way that you produce isn't valuable. But then we're not looking at, okay, well, if all of the people who were doing those levels of production, right, like the things that we don't value, the customer service clerk, the janitors, even nurses, teachers, if these people all stop doing their jobs, society would fall apart. Like the actual value of these people's work is very high, but we've been conditioned to see it as not valuable so that they can be paid less than a living wage, so that they can have less than what they need, and everyone in society just says, yeah, well, that's how that is, right? You're not doing valuable production. And then same thing with we judge people based on 
how rich they are. We judge people based on the clothes that they wear and the vacations that they take and how fit their bodies are and how they they can make themselves look because all of these things are representations of wealth. All of these things are representations of luxury. All of these things are representations that we, we still say, if you are wealthy, you are more worthy of love and respect and kindness. You are a better person than a poor person. And that's how our society is set up and can, it has conditioned us to see the world. It's conditioned us to see people who are healthy as just making good choices and being good people and people who are not healthy as just making bad choices and being bad people. And we are conditioned to see people who are rich and wealthy and have some sort of level of productivity that is deemed worthwhile as being more worthwhile human beings, better quality human beings, human beings who deserve to have their needs met versus people who don't based on their level of productivity. And then we're not even seeing, again, like all of the systems that go with that, that lead to people being in those positions. Not everybody can afford to go to university. Not everybody can afford to get the education or has the opportunities and the resources and the capacity to be in these high level jobs. Not everyone, it's not fair. We can't all just become lawyers and doctors and not have people who do service work and not have janitors and not have city maintainers and all of these things. Again, we need these jobs to be done, but and, and they have high value in terms of actual reality. And yet again, like I say, we're all trained to see them as low wage, low value people. And this is the crux of our society. Yeah. And then on top of that, we all have that instinctual conditioning that tells us that when we are in pain and when our life isn't working out and when things we don't have what we need, we go into that fear state. We go into that state of stress and it does compromise our capacity to think and our capacity to reason and our capacity to future pace and our capacity to make good decisions and then we often get caught in loops of not being supported being antagonized by culture being in that stress state of not having enough making bad choices on some levels because we're in that state of stress and can't and then we're manipulated we're we're taken advantage of by people who know we're in these vulnerable positions and it goes round and round and round and round and round. Okay, so our culture is really not set up for everyone to be happy and healthy, like what we were talking about in the last video. Our culture is not set up so that if you just follow the blueprint of what you're supposed to do, that A, everyone could have success and everyone could be safe and everyone could have enough because our system is not set up for everyone to have enough. Our system is inherently built on the idea that some people are going to be exploited, some people are going to have less than they need so that those who have way more than they need can have way more than they need. We do not live in a society or in a culture where everybody could be rich and wealthy and living in luxury. That is not the system we exist in. In order for the people who are very wealthy in our society to have what they have, they have to exploit labor, they have to exploit people, they have to exploit the land, they have to artificially decrease how much they're paying people to do the work, and they have to artificially increase the perceived value of what they are producing so that they can charge more money then it was actually required to make the thing, yeah, in order to build a profit. So we live in a world right now where it is not possible for everyone to have enough. It is not possible. We cannot have wealth and luxury to the extreme degrees that we have them and expect that everyone is going to be able to have their needs met. We, we can't do that. The greed and the luxury that we have right now as being paraded as what makes someone a good person, a valuable person, a person that we should look up to and that we should try to become, is exactly the kind of person who is making sure 
that most people will be in a state of stress and in a state of manufactured discontent, not having enough, actually not having enough because the system manufactures that that is true, or constantly feeling like they are not enough, constantly feeling like they are failing and not doing enough and not producing enough and not consuming enough. Because again, our system has made it so that we have to be disconnected from our humanity in order to survive it. So even if you are in the category of actually having enough, of actually having what you need, your needs are met, you're likely not going to be happy, not in our system. You're likely going to have anxiety and depression and feel like you don't know what your purpose is and feel like you are disconnected from community and you're going to feel all of these negative things. And you're going to be told over and over and over again that it's because you're not consuming and producing enough. That this solution to all of our problems is more consumption and more production. And the problem with that is that the fact that we have built our entire humanity, our entire world around consumption and production is the reason we all feel so terrible. Because again, in order to do that, in order for us to live the lives that we're living, we have to be disconnected from huge swaths of our humanity. We have to be disconnected from our feelings. We have to be disconnected from our emotions. We have to be disconnected from our bodies. We have to be disconnected from our communities. In order to be in a state of this constant living up to this system, which is completely greed-based, we cannot be in a state of feeling our feelings. We cannot be in a state of actually valuing what has actual value. We cannot be in a state of actual community and not competition with one another. Because you can't keep up with the system and have those things at the same time. Our system is completely built on the idea that we need to be in constant competition with one another. That there's only so many resources there's only so much goodness to go around. And in order to earn it, and in order to be one of those good people, you need to sacrifice whatever you need to sacrifice in terms of your health, your mental health, your capacity to have empathy for others, your capacity to see when enough is enough in order to continue pursuing and pursuing and pursuing and pursuing and pursuing, and pursuing more. Because again, if we as a society were to say, okay, I have enough. I have enough. I'm not scrounging. I'm not in a place where I, I literally don't have my needs met. I'm not trying to say that I'm gonna put myself below the poverty line and have as little as possible and just try and scrape by. I'm saying I have enough. I have a secure roof over my head I can afford food, I can afford some simple pleasures in my life. I don't actually need any more to be happy or to be satisfied or to be safe. If we all did that and we said, okay, I'm not going to keep taking more. I'm not going to keep producing more. I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to start to address these other parts of my humanity now. I'm going to start to address my emotions. I'm going to start to address my relationships. I'm going to start to actually be able to like take care of my health in some way. I'm going to do self-care not as like a checklist thing that I can put on Instagram, but actually like does this benefit my life? I'm going to start to spend time doing things that aren't contributing to our system. The system would collapse. And we have to remember that. If we were to find our enough and to start pulling out on the things that we really don't need to be doing and that don't actually benefit us, if we were to get out of the shame and the blame and the guilt that comes with not being someone who is continually participating in consumption and production, we would collapse the system and we would force a new system.
This is the real truth of the reality that we are living in. We are all held in this shitty system because of shame and guilt. This is why in the mystery school, the whole second curriculum is how do we start to see past our shame and our guilt stories. These stories that tell us that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy of love, I am shameful, I'm not working hard enough, my job isn't good enough, I don't have the right clothes, I don't have the right body, I don't have the right social circle, I am the reason no one likes me, there's something wrong with me that I'm depressed or that I'm anxious or that I'm sad or that I'm angry. When we can get past the idea that, yeah, that's something wrong with you, because this is how we're all stuck in the system when we actually do have enough and we are the people in the middle who are not in poverty, we're not super rich, we're in the middle. This is how we are manipulated. Oh, we got a pause. Okay, this is how we are manipulated into continuing to participate. By constantly being told that the reason we don't feel good Oh, I think my phone's overheating. There you go. Okay, we are being told constantly that the reason we don't feel good, the reason we don't feel satisfied, the reason we have any amount of pain in our lives is because we're not productive or consumptive enough. And we have shame and blame and guilt and the self-help industry and the personal growth industry and the wellness industry are just as much the perpetrators of this shitty mindset that keep us stuck in the system as anything else. That when we are constantly being told that the reason we don't feel good, the reason we don't feel satisfied, the reason we're anxious and depressed and, and, and feeling like we don't know what our purpose is and we don't know where we're supposed to be doing things and we feel lost and we feel hopeless and we feel alone is because we're not achieving our goals. We're not doing what we came here to do and living our highest purpose. We don't have the right relationships, all of this stuff. And this is how we're manipulated into continuing to participate instead of stepping back and saying, wait, maybe I'm in pain because the system is wrong. Maybe I'm in pain because continuing to pursue everything that the system has told me to pursue, the job that looks good on paper, that you know earns me this high income so that I can afford the clothes and afford the skincare and afford the vacations so I can make myself look good, so I can be in the social circles with the right people Maybe it is doing all of that that is actually causing me my pain. And maybe it's not my failure to be able to do that. Because again, there are a lot of us who can't keep up with that, who don't work those jobs, who can't keep up with that social life, who can't, who are constantly feeling anxious and depressed and unregulated and unwell. And we're thinking, what's wrong with me that I can't keep up? What's wrong with me that I can't do it? Why am I failing? And we're constantly, again, manipulated into this childhood view of the world that tells us that when we are in pain, it is because we are failing to live up to expectation. That was the first program any of us ever got, that our caregivers are capable of giving us anything and of taking away all pain and giving us all pleasure. And the only reason that they wouldn't be doing that is because we are failing to live up to their expectation. That's how we saw the world as children. And now as adults, that childhood perspective, that childhood perspective is being manipulated and used against us. That every single time we feel pain in our system, when we feel the pain of sacrificing our humanity for this system, we automatically look for how we are failing to live up to expectation. We automatically look for where we are not being productive or consumptive enough. 
because that's what we've been trained to do. So then we are manipulated deeper and deeper and deeper into the system that causes pain, that makes us think our pain is our fault. Then we try to fit in, we don't fit in, we think that's the reason we're in pain. So we try to fix ourselves with therapy and self-help and personal growth to make ourselves more productive, more regulated so we can go and do the work that we're supposed to be doing. And it's this loop round and round. Instead of ever being able to step, take a step back and say, wait, maybe, again, it's the system that hurts. Maybe it is the constant, I am not enough, I have to achieve more, I have to do more, I have to become more, that's actually causing the pain. Okay, so this leads into this first thing that we're going to have to realize, which again, is that when we find our enough in terms of productivity and consumption, the answer at that point is to stop. To stop leveling up, to stop pursuing more, and to let ourselves start to live in ways where we're not continuing to go further into the system. And that is going to be incredibly difficult to do because we are all triggered by the fear of not being someone who fits in. We are all deeply afraid of being kicked out of the group, of being different, of being rejected. Because again, in our childhoods, the very first program we ever got was in order to get my needs met because I am not capable of meeting my own needs. All children cannot meet their own needs. They can't understand their own needs. All they know is I need to be loved, approved of, and accepted by my caregivers. And then they provide for me. So that's the first program we all ever got. In order to get my needs met, I have to fit in. And we still feel that way to this day as adults. This is why all of us are so afraid of rejection. Because it feels in our bodies like if we get rejected, we're going to die. Because we haven't caught up to the fact that we're adults now who can get our needs met even if people don't like us. That we're adults now with autonomy and we can be misunderstood and we can be judged and we can still be okay. So most of us, if we try to come to this place of, okay, I have enough, I don't need to keep going. The first thing that comes up is massive fear. Well, what's going to happen if I don't keep going? If I don't keep pursuing more in my career, if I don't keep pursuing more, if I don't have the next thing I should be having, right? Like even the idea of like, what if you don't keep up with fashion? What if you like buy some things that fit and then you wear them until they wear out? Like something as simple as that. For a lot of us, we're going to be like, no, I can't do that. Because that would make me look bad. And that would compromise my career and it would compromise all of these things. Right? To say no to that in culture. So that's one of the things. To say, no, I'm not going to keep up with trends. I'm not going to buy new clothes every season. I'm going to buy some staples. Maybe even be like extra amazing second hand. And then I'm going to wear it until they can't be worn anymore. No matter what the, the trend is, I'm going to say this is enough. I have enough clothes. I don't need to keep up with the trends. These fit. They work. I'll keep them till they wear out. For a lot of us, that's going to cause so much anxiety. Because the fear of being left out, the fear of being rejected, the fear of being criticized for not having the latest consumptive thing triggers something very deep inside of us that I'm not going to be safe. I'm not going to be okay, right? Like we think it's like, oh my gosh, I must be so vain or something to think that like I can't consider not being on trend. But it's, it's not vanity. It's that we've been trained to believe that if you don't keep up with the trend, 
you're not going to be loved. You're not going to be approved of. And again, we deeply feel like if that happens, we're not going to be safe. We're not going to be okay. A lot of women, if you don't have a kid, if you decide not to be a mother, you decide not to produce and consume in that way, there's so much societal stigma around that still. Like, what's wrong with you that you don't want to have kids? What's wrong with you that you don't want to do this? And even if you're someone, just any person, who doesn't fix your life to be revolving around having a partner. Like someone you can say, this is my committed partner and we are in a committed relationship. If you decide not to make that a huge part of your life, society's gonna be like, what's wrong with you? We're supposed to be coupling up. Right, like we have new rules now and we're liberal about it. You can be in same sex couples, you can be whatever, but you're still supposed to couple up. So if you're someone who says, well, I want a community, I want a group of friends. I want, I don't want to just live this life where this nuclear family is the only thing that I have. Where I feel completely isolated and alone because this is how culture is set up to isolate us. I want to have community. I want to have actual friends that are my actual friends. I want to have lots of people in my life who I'm like intimate with. People are going to be like, what is wrong with you? Why are you so weird? If you are, again, to be someone who says, you know, I'm working a customer service job and it's paying my bills and it's paying my rent and I'm fine with this. I'm not going to try to have a better job or an adult job or a different job. I'm going to fight for better rights and better wages for these jobs that need to be done. We would be pretty scared to do that because, again, in a lot of ways we can't. We, uh, people can't afford to do that, which is not acceptable. But if we cho- right, when we choose to do that, like if that's your career, But if it's enough for you, who is anyone to tell you that that, that's not enough? Do you see what I'm trying to say here? That a huge part of taking our humanity back, a huge part of evolving the systems that we have into something that are actually sustainable and maintainable for us is going to be saying no. Because another part of this, we are conditioned to believe that our lives are supposed to be super full and overwhelming. It like literally it's never enough to have enough. We are trained that you're supposed to have the 2.5 kids, the house, the cars, the career, But then you also have to be working on your mental health. You have to be working on your physical health. You have to be on top of fashion and looking good and hair and skin and nails. And then we wonder why we're all so burnt out. Because even if you're achieving that, if you're achieving that, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be burnt out. You're not going to be enjoying any of those things. You're not going to be actually like reaping the internal rewards of all of the work that you've done. You're just going to be in this constant constant maintenance mode, life maintenance, one thing after another, taking care of everything. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what it's, that's what success is. Or you're supposed to be rich enough that you pay people to do a bunch of things that you don't want to do. Like cleaning and cooking and all of these things. But then that requires that you overproduce and that you work these jobs and you exploit and manipulate, usually not on purpose, in order to afford all of that. So even if you're succeeding, you're gonna feel like shit. Because to live that life requires that you exploit yourself 
or that you exploit others. Or if you're not succeeding at that, you're going to be constantly told by society you're not good enough. You don't have enough. You're not doing enough. You're not producing enough. You're not consuming enough. You should be working harder, hustling more. Right? If you choose to have a career but not children, what's wrong with you? You should have kids. If you choose to have kids but not a career, what's wrong with you? You choose community and not a primary partner that you're going to have a nuclear family with. Well, you're doing it wrong. That's immature. That's for kids. Real adults isolate and do everything by themselves and depend on one other person. And then we wonder why we all get divorced. If you're not participating in the ever increasing consumption and production, you're labeled as being wrong, bad, and broken. And so again, the main point that I'm wanting to make here is that in order to get out of this system, we have to stop doing what we're doing. This is unsustainable. But more than that, I want you to remember that it hurts for a reason. That you are not failing and you are not doing something wrong when you can't keep up. It's too much. I got so weak, I almost passed out today. I'm still trying to get my business going enough. I'll give up soon, but then have a breakdown, but still be alive. Yeah. And, and again, it shouldn't be so hard. It doesn't have to be so hard. The fact that we are all so isolated and conditioned to be in these nuclear families where we're not connected to each other, and if we are connected to each other, we're in competition. This is a huge part of what's wrong with our system and a thing we need to say no to. We are not taught to work together and collaborate and support one another because if we did that, we would, re we would rely less on corporations. We would rely less on being these individuals who think that everything that happens in our life is because of our individual choices and the only way to get forward momentum is to make different individual choices. That's a complete manipulation and it does not have to be this way. But in order for us to change it, we have to stop having shame about ourselves. That's again what I said about the whole mystery school is literally teaching us how to get past our shame so we can see what's actually happening. Because most of the time when, when we say, I failed, I have to give up, I can't do this, we think I did something wrong. I'm not good enough. I'm too weak. I'm not strong enough. I didn't hustle hard enough. When it's like, no, you should n we should not have to do that to be successful. Not in our culture where we have so much technology, so much understanding, so much capacity to collaborate and work together. It is ridiculous that we are living the way that we are living. It's completely out of alignment with reality. But again, we are so manipulated into never seeing it because we're so manipulated into blaming ourselves and thinking that more is the answer and I have to push harder and I have to go farther instead of saying, why? Why do I have to do all that stuff to have just the bare minimum or to have success? Or what is the success that I'm chasing? And is it actually going to fulfill me? Because like I was taught, right? So many people in our system who have the dream, they've achieved it. Number one, we have to remember they were supported by society. No one is a self-made person ever. No one gets there by themselves ever. They are always invested in. They either had parents that could send them to university or they lived in communities that were safe and they had their needs met so they weren't in a state of complete fear and meltdown all the time. So they had the capacity to move forward and make good decisions and be healthy. They had able bodies. Like the people who are successful are successful for a reason and it's not just that they're good people who are making good choices. They have been invested in by society every single time. And the people who had to fight their way 
out of poverty and had to fight their way out of antagonistic communities and places where people are not safe and they didn't have their basic needs met are one in a million because it's incredibly difficult to do that. Not because people are weak and failing, but because when you're in that fear state of not having enough, actually not having enough, it totally affects the way that you can make choices and society is set up so that the choices you actually have access to are limited. And that is a requirement of our system. In order for the people who are at the top to have all the resources and all the access and all the capacity to do whatever they want, everyone else has to suffer. It has to be that way. And we are trained to blame ourselves instead of saying, wait, maybe the system is messed up. And then again, for those of us in the middle who have achieved enough, who are in a state of relative safety, oftentimes we don't see it. We don't feel it. We don't get that we're there. Because there's the constant, yeah, but you're not enough. There's more to go. You have to keep going, keep striving, keep leveling up, keep going, keep going, keep going. This is not enough. And if you ever try to stay in your enough, you're going to be rejected and everyone's going to judge you and you're going to be seen as lazy and like you're not trying and like you don't get it and or people just won't like you. You don't fit in. You're going to be weird. And that scares the shit out of us. Because like I said, we really feel like we're not going to be okay when that happens. So this is why this self-love work is so important for cultural revolution. We have to learn how to get into our adult perspectives, how to love ourselves enough so that we can get past our shame and our blame and our guilt, so we can start to identify what hurts about this system. What if it's not me failing? What if it's the system that is shitty? And that's why I'm in pain. And we start to break ourselves out of the conditioning that says these are the things you have to do. These are the bare minimums. And the floor just lifts every time. Do more personal growth. Do more self-help. Do more career stuff. Do more level up, level up, level up, level up because you're never enough. Like I said, the wellness and the self-help and the personal growth industries are the worst for this. You're never spiritual enough. You're never enlightened enough. You're never self-cared or regulated enough. And again, like traditional therapy and things like this, I'm not against it, but at the same time, I'm going to say there's still a lot of it that's like if you regulate enough and if you take care of yourself enough and if you get diagnosed enough, you'll be able to be successful in the system. It's still trying to fix you when you are anxious or depressed or neurodiverse or whatever. It's how do we set you up so that you can continue participating in the never enough system and just be happy. It's not going to happen. None of us are going to be happy in this. We are not going to find. We are not going to find our humanity in this system. And this is what we are actually looking for. When we have enough and then we keep going on production and consumption, we become a hungry ghost who always feels like we're not enough because what we're actually feeling is a lack of our humanity. Is a lack of our humanity. We're feeling disconnected from that which actually brings the human being satisfaction in this life, which is beyond consumption and production. It's community, it's rest, it's time in nature, it's connection to art and expression. It's, there's so much connection to our feeling, connection to our bodies, empathy. This is what we're actually missing. But the system keeps saying, no, the reason you feel like shit is because you're not doing enough. And then the more you do, the more you feel like shit. Because in order to keep doing more, you have to sacrifice the things that you're actually feeling the lack of more. That's the vicious cycle. The more you participate, the more you have to sacrifice your feelings. 
the more you have to sacrifice your body, the more you have to sacrifice your rest, the more you have to sacrifice connection to anything other than a significant other. The worse you're going to feel, the more they're going to tell you, you need to do more. And then it's just this cycle that never ends. We need to break it by being like, no. Enough is enough. Okay, so me right now. Gave up on the marriage house kids because it wasn't it for me. Felt like I lost my humanness and was wrapped in a system that wanted me, wanted me subjugated there. The guilt trip people put on you. Exactly. Right? The guilt trip. That It is that shame and the guilt that keeps us trapped. That's why I keep coming back to this. The shame and the guilt is what keeps us trapped in doing things that are totally counter to our own health. Our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, the health of our planet, the health of our communities. Because we're shamed and blamed and guilted into it. We have to be strong enough to start to love ourselves enough to say, no, it is not that I am failing. I don't feel like shit because I'm not enough. That is not it. That's the first thing we have to check out of. That's the first societal value we have to stop pursuing. Trying to make ourselves good enough by what we produce and what we consume. And following the guilt and following the shame so that we never question, wait, why? Why am I doing this? What does it actually get me? What is required that, what do we have to sacrifice in order to make this happen? Is this good? Do I actually need this? Or is this just causing more stress? Do I need to fit in or could I be okay? It's the shame and the guilt that is the major problem that keep us stuck in this. And literally society will tell you that you are crazy or insane or unhinged if you don't follow along. If you blow the whistle on this stuff, people will tell you that you're not well. And they're coming from a place of like, <laughs> right? Overwhelm, anxiety, depression, getting therapy because they literally can't handle it. Life maintenance, not enjoying anything, not being able to have true connection with anyone, being in this state of like emotional, mental, spiritual shutdown, saying you are not healthy because you're not willing to continue to sacrifice your humanity to keep producing and consuming at the rates that we're told we have to, which again is never enough. Trends change every season for a reason. What is, what is viewed as good enough is gate kept and only for the few for a reason so that everyone else will feel like shit about themselves and continue to participate and sacrifice themselves so that the people who have gate kept the good stuff can keep having it and can keep turning around and being like, well, you could have it too if you just tried harder. If you just did more, if you just consume more, if you just produce more, and it's not true, they actually couldn't. Because again, our systems are not set up that way. They are set up so that only a few can have what they have. And it's, they depend on the exploitation of everyone under them in order to have that. Right? The exploitation is not a bug, it is a feature. So when we start to say, okay, no, I'm not going to keep participating. I'm going to take the risk of being rejected. I'm going to take the risk of being weird and different and people judging me. And I'm not going to keep going where I don't need to. I'm going to start to explore my humanity, my emotions, my body, my self-expression, my relationships beyond just a primary partner. I'm going to take time to not be consuming and not be producing. Because I have enough, I'm fine. The systems would collapse. We have the power to change things. But we have to get past our shame and our guilt. 
We have to get past this shame and this guilt that keeps telling us we have to keep doing more and being more and consuming more and producing more and that that's always the answer. And the reason we're in pain is because we're not producing and consuming enough. That's what's keeping us trapped. That's what's keeping us stuck. And then for each one of us, again, what is enough is different. For each one of us, this is gonna be a continual unfolding. We discover what, what is really gonna work for us step by step. And we have to realize that we're lucky and privileged to be in a position to be able to do that. That we get to choose to not keep going. And we have to understand that the more we do that, we make space for the people who are in actual poverty to have enough. When we stop taking more than we need, we destabilize the structure. We start to have more empathy. We start to have more left over. And, and honestly, we just stop profiting the people who are doing the exploiting. We take back our power and our energy and our resources from the very systems that are then turning around and doing all the exploiting. We have to take ourselves back from them. They are not going to change. We have to change. We have to stop giving them our power and our money and our energy and our time and our humanity, all of it, not just money. Because then we have bargaining power. Then we can actually demand that they have to change things because they need us more than we need them. So what are you willing to stop participating in? What are you willing to stop doing? Where are you willing to stop consuming and stop producing where you don't need to anymore? And where can you do that work to love yourself and comfort yourself and nurture yourself and do all the internal work so that that shame doesn't drive you back into doing it? That's part of why I made the school, because it's hard. And you don't have to do it alone, but right? Get a therapist, whatever. But help get someone or something or coaching or whatever that you need to help you get past the shame. And get past the word is going to fix you so that you can get back to the system. That's not healthcare. That's not therapy. That's just more of the system. It's just more of the system. It's not going to help us. Why does it hurt? Why can't you do it? Why, even though when you do do it, do you not feel good enough? What if it's not that you're failing or that you're not enough or that you're not doing good enough? What if it's that the system doesn't work? What if it's the complete sacrificing of your humanity to do that? That hurts. And if that was your perspective, what would you be willing to let go of? What would you be willing to not do? Where are you willing to take that risk of being rejected and seeing that you can be okay anyways? And where can you be a support for the people who are really being truly exploited in our system? Because it's not the same steps for all of us. Right? For some of us, we do need to meditate and take hours a day to do this internal work. And for some of us, we don't have the time and the luxury of that. And so I don't want there to be a shame or blame or guilt about where anyone is at. If you really don't have enough, it's not your fault. The systems are set up this way. And again, I really think it's our responsibility as people in the middle to make this change, to do this work so that we can check out for ourselves and then to make it possible for more people to have enough. We don't need more millionaires. We don't need more girl bosses who are making 10K months. We don't need that. We need more community. We need more people saying it's enough. We need 
less fast fashion, we need less consumption, we need less waste, we gotta check out. We gotta find our enough and live our enough life. And see that that naturally means that there's stuff left over for the people who actually need it. Okay? So again, are you willing to not pursue the things that culture tells you to pursue so that you can find your humanity and be a part of the solution? And I just want to quickly shout out my internet friend, Rachel Key. I'll put her links everywhere because she talks a lot about this stuff too. It's just, we need a different system and, and we have to get out of this shame and guilt that keeps us going in these directions that are not healthy for anybody. That's the solution. Okay? What are you willing to not do? What are you willing to not pursue? And how are you going to support yourself so that you can do it without being in deep shame and guilt all the time? That's the next steps. Okay? Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video.